Are ghosts alive? And we're actually dead. Is soul music actually called that because it harvests the souls of innocence? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life. The first one's great. I like that one. The ghosts are alive and we're dead. Sometimes it's just a simple switcheroo. (laughs) That's all it takes. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. My name is Kit Greer. I'm your uh, host today. I'm joined by my professional paranormal investigator host, Mr. Rory Pars. Hello, paranormal... People. People. I was about to say investigators, and I was like, absolutely not. They don't have the privilege of calling themselves You're a not paranormal a doctor, investigator. Roy PhD. The P is for paranormal. The H is for <laughs> hot. I'm Who hot. Knows what? <laughs> paranormal hot duck. <laughs> So welcome to the podcast. If this is your first time tuning in on This Paranormal Life, each week we dissect a paranormal tale or claim and try and find out what's true, what's fake, what's real, what's bad, what's good, what's high, what's low, what's new and what's old. And just try and find out what's real. (laughs) Now I think about actually scrap all that other stuff, just whether it was real or not. Yeah, actually, let's just cut to that. I mean, hot or cold? I don't think that's... (laughs) The primary concern of a paranormal Wait investigator. Wait till you hear today's tale. <laughs> the high ghost of Lowington. So today... <laughs> we will investigate. <laughs> At this point, it's sad. They're just making it up. <laughs> I've got a good one for you, Rory. Uh, let me ask you a question. I don't even have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You passed the test. Well done. You called no You called my bluff, sir. <laughs> but let me tell you this riddle. Seconds pass. No riddle. Test two. Well done, sir. <laughs> I see you've played this game before. Pick a card. There's no deck. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> anyway, it's time you left. This is my house again. You have outdone me, Would sir. You like a stick of gum <laughs> again. There is nothing there. Let me let, let me ask you a question for real this time. Okay, okay. How much do you know about interdimensional travel? That's interesting. Uh, very little. Very little. Nor do I. That's why it's a mystery. <laughs> let me rewind the clock. Let's jump back in time. It's nineteen. Literally. I did you like old timey music in here? <laughs> Oh, hello, chaps. Why am I dressed in those odd clothes? <laughs> Let's wind back the clock to 1954 Tokyo. It's Haneda International Airport. Business as usual in Tokyo, with just another European flights checking in, and passengers start queuing up at immigration. The immigration officer is checking everyone's passport. I mean, this is 1954. This is like pre 9 11. They're probably just like. Just waltz right in. Yeah, you just probably like dance right in. That's no one it. cares. Just smoke your cigarettes anywhere you want. Absolutely. Just hand in. They're just at like border patrol, just handing cigars to children. Yeah. Just as they file absolutely. into the country. Woman behind the desk, she's not getting paid as much as that guy. <laughs> It's all, it's all backwards. So the immigration officer's checking everyone's passports. Name, check. Age, check. Nationality, check. And if it all checks out, in you go. Well, dozens of passengers are filing by until the officer looks up and inspects a passport that he doesn't recognize. That's funny. So he checks the details. Name, age, nationality, Torred. I can see my mind. Puts down the passport. Next person puts down the passport. This dude comes up. Ancient slab <laughs> on the countertop. Greetings. <laughs> he's, he's got like spikes in his shoulder. Send like me home. <laughs> yeah. He's straight out like Mad Max. <laughs> when is the flight to Torrid 9? <laughs> Uh, would you like a smoking or non-smoking seat? My species is constantly exhaling smoke. (laughs) (laughs) We're from Cigaro 16. (laughs) Cigar producing planet. That's why I came to Smokio. No, this is, this is (laughs) Tokyo. What? (laughs) I've been duped. (laughs) His friends went to Smokio and they gave him the wrong name deliberately. Did you think you were in smoke? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Just get me out of here. Really defensive. <laughs> Suitcase so full he's... of cigars to smoke up with the boys. 
So he's so he's from a a, a country that they don't recognize. Torred. Torred. Okay. The border um, patrol. He checks with his co-workers, and no one's ever heard of Torred. I mean, if you think this is this is just post-war Japan. I mean, it's not like the information age. So I guess this guy thinks it's possible I've missed something. This is my second language, you know, as well. Yeah, like totally. Country. So just making sure. So. No one's ever heard of it. They, they, they notice that this guy speaks um, French perfectly, Japanese, and a number of other languages. Okay. So they ask him where Torred is. What does he mean by it? And the man's surprised. He's like, oh, Torred? It's uh, on the border between Spain and France. And he's like blown away that no one knows what it is. And he says it's been there for like a thousand years. Apparently this guy just look apparently doesn't have spikes in his shoulders and right. <laughs> speaks like a like <laughs> his cigars in every <laughs> orifice of his body. <laughs> in his frickin' eye sockets. <laughs> Apparently he just looks normal, well dressed, speaks perfect French in particular. At first the officers think, does this guy mean Andorra? Does this guy like dumb as hell or like forgotten the word? Is he having like a like a a breakdown of some kind. Right, or he's mastered so many languages he's made his own. <laughs> and he's like, I'm from Torret. That's the That's next France step. in me language. <laughs> a master of 17 <laughs> languages, all made up. It's actually uh, pretty easy to learn a language when you make it up on the on the fly. <laughs> Spoken perfectly by one. Con. That means me in my language. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it up as you go a gang. That's long. <laughs> But the man refuses. No, I'm from Torrid. This is a tough spot for them because at this point I'm kind of placing myself in this in this airport worker's position. If someone arrives with a legit passport in the sea of people with passports and it, it seems like it's got all of the right things. It's got the little holographic bit. It's got right. like the chip in the front. I don't know if it did back then. And someone I'm arrives no. <laughs> with a legit passport. You don't recognize it. What do you do? It's hard to just say, no, I'm not buying it. Go home, piss off home, get in the next flight. Right. So he's kind of run it by people. Even more weirdly, they flick through his passport and he has all the visa stamps from his previous business trips through Japan. So they're going... Oh, so they've let him through so before. someone's let him through before. So they think, <laughs> let's talk to this guy's company and get an ID on him. Let's talk to someone else who knows who this guy is. Take the names and addresses in his documentation and look them up. Much like his fateful flight, the company he was meeting existed. Okay. But not the company he said he was from. So did he make it up? The hotel he's staying at had no record of him coming, and the bank on his checkbook didn't <laughs> seem to exist either. What? So... Is something mysterious afoot, or is he a Leonardo DiCaprio of himself in Catch Me If You Can, just like peeling off checkbook stickers, and is he just like a <laughs> right. fraudster? So you can't let someone in the country without any documentation, that's how it goes. So whilst they get to the bottom of this mystery, they put him in a hotel room overnight with security monitoring his whereabouts. Fast forward the next morning, border officials are filing into work in Haneda Airport and everyone's ready to take another look at this case now they've slept on it. They go to the office to check on the passport again. What? It's gone. It's gone. It's not in the drawer. On his driver's license? Everything's gone. Quick, call security at the hotel. They bust into the room where the man from Torred was staying and nothing. There's no trace of him ever having been there. Clean sheets, baby. What? Gideon Bible still in the drawer, baby. Mini bar fully stocked, baby. <laughs> Surprisingly empty. <laughs> All the freaking hole in the sliding was... <laughs> door. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was as if this had never happened. So this story opens a whole can of worms. Or should I say, whole can of worm holes. <laughs> That's right. What if he didn't travel by nice, plane, but nice rather too. tried by wormhole from another parallel dimension? But if that was true, then presumably he would know that he'd gone through a wormhole. But that what, he traveled. But what if he like tripped through one, Alice in Wonderland style, just like no? Fell what, you down don't a trip hole. through a worm. There's no accidental passages through wormholes. We don't know that. That's very true. I don't know that. But then also, so if if, if this man can travel between realities yes. through via wormholes, yes. then also why is he so dumbfounded when he's entered a reality where his country doesn't exist? Presumably, then that's happened before. Presumably, he's gone through a reality where everyone has snakes for heads you know why mm. be so confused when it's like oh my country doesn't exist that's weird although to be fair the last reality i was in everyone were clowns 
<laughs> you know, that's a very weird, minute thing to yeah. hang on to and be so I know what you by. mean. It's like because you could feasibly go into the next universe where up is down. You're really and, hanging on to that, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> and hot is cold. And as opposite. far as normal investigators, we need to know hot from cold and up from down. <laughs> but you could go into a parallel dimension and planes could be spiders. <laughs> And airports could be muffins. Spiders. <laughs> you could enter a world where everything is spiders. It's essentially a spider a world. Spider land. <laughs> the spiders walk on spiders. Welcome to spider land. Admission is three spiders. Three, spiders. <laughs> three flies. Very rare currency. It's just a big web. <laughs> um, yeah, see, that would be weird. If he showed up to web world... And went to spider immigration and was like, oh, that's weird. My hometown doesn't exist. Spiders, conversely, have actually really heard of Torrid. It's like a big tourist. Oh, of course. Yeah. Then that would be more explainable. I find it weird that a man who can travel through wormholes to parallel universes finds himself in such a jam. It's well, a weird situation. It might become being. more clear within the context of other experiences. That's right. This guy isn't alone in There's his more? adventures. Let's fast forward. It's 2009. There's a man called James Richards. He's walking his dog in Del Puerto Canyon, California, when he trips and hits his head, rendering himself unconscious. When he blacks out, he finds himself... This is how he's recounted it. He finds himself in a strange room with a man named Jonas. Jonas explained that he was traveling interdimensionally on business. So Wait, Jonas was? Yeah. Okay. So Richards has, like I said, accidentally whacked his head. And for all intents and purposes, this is a dream. But okay, this is what that's he's very much how I am proceeding with this. <laughs> Jonas explains he's traveling interdimensionally on business. The more the two talked, eventually the Beatles come up. You talk to people about pop culture, what they're into and stuff like that. And hell, it's a dream. You can't just drop a line about Beatles and not expect me to assume you're talking about a parallel universe filled with Beatles <laughs> right after we had talked <laughs> about the spider smart. universe. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of Beatles? Because you better like them where you're going. <laughs> Hold my hand. Here we go. Jump through a wormhole. Welcome to Beetle Borg. Christ! <laughs> Beetle Borg. <laughs> Jonas explained that the Beatles actually existed in his dimension as well. So just in the same way, people are also called Jonas in his dimension. Right. There's infinite possible dimensions out there. And so in this one, the Beatles exist. There's like a ton where Beatles exist. But the difference being in Jonas's parallel universe, the Beatles are still alive, man. And they're still making music. He couldn't believe that in James Richards' universe, they had like died. If you think about it, it's kind of a crazy story that one of them gets assassinated, but in his universe, they're still going. And he's like, oh my God, well, what's the new stuff like? Like, I've heard all the old stuff. Well, Jonas reaches into his bag. He's like, I think I've actually got some freaking Beatles music lying around. What? And he, in this dream, he hands him some, so like a cassette. Right. Richards wakes up. He wakes up in Del Puerto Canyon, his dog licking his face, and, uh, he gets up, shakes himself off, and he feels a weight in his pocket. That's right. He reaches down. The cassette is still there. He has interdimensional Beatles music. What? And if you, listeners, go to www.thebeatlesneverbrokeup.com. Oh, my God. You, too, can listen to interdimensional Beatles music. And so for those of you listening at home, they can't be bothered to look up that URL. You're in luck. I'm about to play some right here on the podcast. So are you ready, Roy, to hear some interdimensional Beatles music? Unreleased Beatles music. How exciting is this? It's so crazy. Let's see what happens Let's in go. their careers. Okay, so some, some voice work. Whoa. It's pretty jamming. I was not expecting this at all. Here we go. Ah. Uh. Pretty funky. In a dimension of wormholes. I mean, whenever I heard the story, I was expecting this to be him farting into a microphone <laughs> for 30 minutes. So I'm pretty impressed. This is serviceable music. <laughs> dimension full of spiders. I'm trying to hear the voices. I'm trying, because that's going to be the telltale, you know? Even whether it's real or not, it's not a bad song. Yeah. So... Are you a Beatles fan, Roy? Uh, I dabble. I dabble. I dabble. Yeah, I mean... I know I, the... Like, we both know the music. 
I yeah. don't think either one of us listened to them avidly. <laughs> I'm wearing 16 <laughs> bits of Beatles merchandise. I mean, for sure. So what you'll notice if you're a real Beatles fan is that within those songs are contained some of the melodies, words, uh, ideas from the Beatles' later works in their solo careers. Oh, so, okay. So people kind of criticized them and were saying, I think you've just put together some of their solo stuff, mashed it together and made Instead it sound like Beatles a Beatles and, record. Yeah. And Richard said, fuck off. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> he punched that guy in the face <laughs> super hard. <laughs> said, all you need is love. <laughs> and then had butted that and bitch and broke his nose. nose. That's right. He smashed him over the head with the same rock that knocked him out. You shall the see what I saw. <laughs> Caved his <laughs> skull in. Actually killed the guy. <laughs> Enjoy beetle dimension, bitch. <laughs> Hope you like spiders. Richard's got a big like dent in his head as well. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> oh, God. But what he said was that the fact that it contained the same ideas as their solo projects, did not mean that this was not Beatles music. He said, on the contrary, they still had those ideas. Oh, but together. In a different dimension. So whenever they stayed together, those songs just came out through the Beatles into this record. Wow, but that's whenever interesting. whenever John Lennon died and they broke up, they then took those ideas into their individual solo projects. Yeah. And the Beatles music was lost. That's interesting. Way to spin it. <laughs> you know, you lying son of a bitch. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking, this is getting pretty crazy. But I've got one more for you. Consider the story of Miss Lorena Garcia. One morning in July 2008, Miss Garcia woke up and thought something wasn't right. Her, be Her bed was a spider. <laughs> Clothes, a spider. Her eyelids. <laughs> Nay, spiders again! <laughs> How odd! She looked down to see she had not two legs, <laughs> as the morning before, but it! <laughs> Something wasn't right. Her pajamas were not the kind she put on last night before bed. Weird. But she brushed it off because she was late for work. She got dressed and drove to work. But when she got there, she was informed she didn't actually work there. <laughs> She's a crackhead. Impossible, she thought. <laughs> she had worked there for years? Confused. Oh, this is quite sad. <laughs> confused, she drove home again, wondering what the hell could be happening. Imagine how confused you would be if this legit happened to you, though. As she entered her house, <laughs> her ex-boyfriend from six months ago was just chilling in her house. She's like, what are you doing here? He says, what are you talking about we never broke up why would he say that <laughs> he would never say that that's such a weird it was sense so of quick <laughs> yeah what are you talking about i didn't put you in a wormhole and bring you to a dimension where we never I broke didn't up bash you there with a rock <laughs> <laughs> anyway come listen to this new beatles tape i've got <laughs> it's, Mr. It's, it's actually pretty lit <laughs> what are all the instruments doing out in the living room nothing <laughs> She thought, impossible, she already had a new boyfriend, but she realized she had no way of contacting him, and when she gave his information to a private investigator, the boyfriend didn't exist. So, did Mrs. Garcia travel dimensions in the middle of the night, or did she get ghosted super hard by her ex-boyfriend? <laughs> I don't know. We have a lot of anecdotes here, not a lot of hard evidence, apart from this Beatles mixtape. Alternate dimensions have been hypothesized in physics, but not necessarily demonstrated or proven. Right. I mean, we do know in quantum physics there are things uh, uh, known as virtual particles. They're known to pop in and out of existence, and we don't really understand how or why they do this. Are they crossing dimensions? Is it possible that the man from Tared just blinked in and out of our dimension, just like these particles? Or indeed, an unreleased Beatles mixtape did the same? <laughs> It's interesting. Again, it's one of these paranormal mysteries, one of these paranormal ideas that has almost more grounds in science than it does the paranormal, mm. which I think is always going to push us a little bit more on the side of believability. Mm. Now, whether or not it is possible, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. Do I think any of these examples <laughs> <laughs> highlighted are an example of that possibility? Absolutely not. Wow. 
That's Absolutely. crushing. Except Ban from, from uh, Torred. I think that's just a very romantic story, isn't it? Like, you oh, really I mean, get it just into it. It's, of just, it. it's just like... Oh, it's beautiful. It's such a cool idea. A cool, I know. It's amazing. It's one of those things. I actually, whenever I was researching it, I think a lot of people felt the same thing. I saw a lot of kind of articles, forums, and comment threads. And people were sort of saying, for the love of God, is there any sub- substantial evidence for this ever happening? Or yeah. is this just one of those tales? It's just like Chinese whisper keeps getting repeated. I did see one commenter who claimed that his like granddad worked in Haneda Airport and knew of this tale and he recounted like what had happened to his colleagues and everything. But again, this is just like word of mouth. You've exactly, no, you've yeah. no idea. So it's tough. It's tough with that one. It, it's just, it just reeks of being like such a perfect story. Yeah, that's the problem with it. But it's also so intricate and you know, there's so many little details that are so alluring and like mm-hmm. really make you want to believe. It's a tough one. As you said yourself, you know, in science, when you break things down to like a subatomic level and even further, you've got things. Is it a quark mm. that essentially can be in two destinations at once can like teleport? Yeah, surely Schrodinger's it's, cat and whatnot. Yeah, all mm. of this stuff it is, is mind blowing. There's not really an explanation behind it. So who's to say much like one of these subatomic particles, humans can intermittently jump from dimensions without even their knowledge of doing so. Hell, maybe be. we've jumped several since sitting on this chair. It could be. I mean, I've heard the theory that let's say, you know, they talk about there's 11 dimensions. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, well, we know the first three. That's just like Spiders, space. beetles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what were you, you going to say? Spiders, and then somewhere down the line, there's like time and right. uh, space. Yeah. But um, we know what the first like four are. But then it's like, once you get into like five, six, seven, it becomes, let's say, choice becomes mm-hmm. like a dimension. So whenever you make a choice in the day, let's say you decide to, you know, eat a cereal for breakfast rather than than an energy drink. I'm looking at you, Rory. God damn, don't shame me like this. <laughs> that once you make that choice you've that's how maybe the universe works that you have passed into dimension in which that's what Splits. happened every moment you're just passing in and out of multiple oh. different dimensions making choices all through the day so if we look at it as in there's a start and end and we're moving through that timeline mm-hmm. there's essentially infinite threads of every possibility and as we make those decisions our universe then crosses that's along right. those threads as we progress wow so maybe that's what that guy did and he he just through some choice or like some freak incident he just jumped too many threads yeah it just went like one way too far where that country didn't even exist madness and then that would explain why he wouldn't even know that he jumped in the first place mm-hmm. and people say this podcast is just oh speculation and jokes and comedy this is some hard hitting paranormal investigation I mean, we're doing this here. is a live show at a kindergarten <laughs> yeah. this is literally entertainment for children <laughs> This is broadcast in 52 countries and none of them speak English. But hell, if they don't admit that it's correct, I brought rocks to bash them all. (laughs) I'll take them to dimensions they've only dreamed of. Spiders and Tupperware. (laughs) I'm looking at you, Timmy, front row. (laughs) I'm two steps away of showing you some new Beatles tracks. I swear to God. Timmy's dad comes in, you're hovering over him with a giant (laughs) rock. (laughs) And a Beatles mixtape in the other hand. It's real! <laughs> Investigate! John Lennon never died! Uh, where do you where do you lie on it? Yeah, I, I think as much as I uh, criticized you, I think these incidents... I mean, Miss Garcia is out of her damn mind. No, I think she... That's why it's quite sad. I think she borderline has dementia. <laughs> yeah, I think something went wrong there for sure. <laughs> But uh, yeah, definitely. I think there's, I think there's space for this. I think there's definitely a possibility this kind of thing could happen. Could happen. Absolutely. Beyond our pay grade. <laughs> Beyond our pay grade. Beyond it's on a need to know basis. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know, for, for lack of scientific hard evidence, I think I'm just gonna have to come down the side of yes, this is possible. That's an optimistic conclusion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it is possible as well. Wow, we are dumb as hell. <laughs> This is what I hate. I hate that we can do these these huge podcasts where we really ana- uh, analyze all these specific encounters and, you know, these incredible possibilities in the paranormal world. And then someone will tweet at me saying, holy shit, you said Atlantis was real. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I did, didn't I? It's your dad. 
<laughs> Holy shit. Uh, hashtag disowned. You hashtag <laughs> investigate. Hashtag investigate. You gotta <laughs> listen to the whole episode to get the con. I'm sure the listeners are right here with us when we say this is possible. Yeah. Like it's possible. You just gotta come on the journey, you know, come in with an open mind and uh, just open yourself up to being a moron. Yeah. From just time do to it. Time. Life's way more fun. <laughs> So I think that about wraps it up for the, the these tales of interdimensional travelers, at least, for today. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please email us in your own uh, feedback or, or submissions of your own interdimensional stories to thisparanormallifepodcast at gmail.com. And otherwise, tune in next week for another paranormal tale from your two favorite paranormal investigators. Oh, I like that. From this dimension. I don't know what it's like in other dimensions. Yeah, I mean, the there's probably some legit paranormal podcasters <laughs> in other dimensions. Yeah, badass as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Taros! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> if you've enjoyed this podcast, <laughs> send us spiders! <laughs> Even though everything is spiders, they people just want He's more spiders. Into a giant spider. <laughs> they want more spiders. 